Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, October the 30th, 2017. And TASS News, Russian language reporting today that Russia and Belarus have formally uh, brought about their agreement for aerospace protection, joint aerospace protection. And no doubt this is going to set off a wave of uh, repercussions uh, with NATO, of course, being so close there embedded into Europe there with Poland there uh, to the to the west and southwest of Belarus and of course Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia all on the northern sides of Belarus there. This means that Russia would be able to move in the S-400 system inside the S-300 system inside of Belarus there and that's not going to go very well with NATO. Of course Russia has promised retaliation for the continued buildup of NATO forces on its own border and this certainly seems to be exactly that retaliation process process that Russia was planning on doing there. Uh, also in other news as well, uh, there has been, uh, just a little earlier today, the Egyptian air power unleashed, as it says here in the article here, Muregion, uh, uh, hail on insurgents near Libyan borders there. We can see some of the images there in the photo there, the, uh, the Apache helicopters, and of course showing on the ground here, the explosions there, trying to stop the uh, the the Libyans from breaking and coming into the, to the Egyptian side of the border there. So the Egyptians are been very very aggressive in stopping uh, this onslaught of Libyans crossing over their own borders. Very interesting to see how that plays out there. And then another article that actually came out that was very concerning to me as well today. The U UK. Uh, discriminates against Christians fleeing Islamic State in Syria. Not just the UK, but the UN as well has been accused of discriminating against the Christians, uh, not only just the Christians, but as well as uh, some other groups there inside of Syria, including the Shiites. The Sunnis have pretty much been the only ones that have been allowed to, to flee into Britain there. And uh, some of the articles, some of the statements in here, wanted to bring this out to you. Figures obtained by Barnabas Fund, an agency which helps persecuted Christians show the government and UN have uh, prioritized Sunni Muslims over Christians for asylum. Uh, of 8,136 given shelter in the UK in 2015 and 2016, only 70 were Christians and a mere 20 were were uh, Yazidis. Uh, the Yazidis is uh, the, the people that were actually considered to be the descendants of the Magi who actually came and gave gifts unto uh, Jesus at his birth, uh, just so you might know who they actually are. And some people might say, well, it's coming from a Muslim nation. We shouldn't expect a whole lot of Christians to be coming in. Well, there were actually 2 million Christians uh, that were living around Damascus alone. And uh, about 1.4 million have been killed by ISIS militants. So when they could have been rescued and sent to refugee places inside of Europe and that of uh, Britain, they definitely were not being sent in. The Shiites have been no different. Only 33 Shiite Muslims were allowed in. The rest were Sunni, which were 10,801 uh, Sunni refugees that were allowed to come in. Very troubling uh, situation there to see that. And of course, the Sunnis are very much pro-Roman Catholic. Uh, maybe that's a, a lot to do with this. And of course, the Eastern Orthodox religion there is more uh, pro-Eastern religion and not that of pro-Roman Catholic. So very interesting how that plays out right down religious lines and beliefs is the ones that get rescued in the first place. Speaking of religious beliefs, uh, another interesting thing happening in France there, the French administrative court has ordered the removal of the cross from the monument of St. Paul John II in a public square in the northwest of France saying it violates the secular nature of the state. Well, I thought that's kind of interesting because that's what's happening in the United States as I've been bringing this out all along. It is part of a new world order agenda. And I don't think the Vatican is really going to oppose it either because they're in on the New World Order agenda as well, bringing about a one world religion, which also would remove crosses, which they've been doing in the United States from churches and, and public locations. And that eventually will go to the private sector as well. Don't think it won't. It definitely will. So history is being eradicated, such as the monument of George Washington or many other statues in America, as well as those in South Africa and those in Poland, 
uh, and those that are in the Middle East, all these are being eradicated as they get ready to rewrite history. Very troubling situation happening in the world today. Also, another uh, very disturbing news is coming out from Afghanistan where U.S. Uh, Army Staff Sergeant Logan J. Melger, who was a Green Beret, uh, and from what I can understand, a Hispanic Green Beret that was serving for the, for the uh, armed forces there, serving inside of Africa, actually not Afghanistan, but in Africa there, was uh, killed not too long ago, and now there is a suspected foul play and two uh, Navy SEALs being uh, questioned about his death. A strangulation uh, or death by asphyxiation has been, has been alleged against him, and says the U.S. Navy is investigating whether two members of the elite SEAL team Mur six murdered an army Green Beret in Mali on a secret assignment. Very troubling to find out, especially if that ends up being true. That is not good at all. Uh, also, another news there, Manford charges grew out of a record of se records seized in a no-knock raid. This has been coming out. Of course, President Trump distancing himself from his former uh, campaign manager and saying that this was all before uh, this is all before he ever came involved in the campaign. Sorry about that. All before this, this happened before ever coming into his own campaign. And uh, of course, I think it's kind of interesting. The, the ties that are being investigated, of course, are the pro-Russian government at the time of Ukraine, where they were trying to lobby help lobby to get them inside of the European Union and closer ties with the United States. But it's also about the time when the Maidan coup happened. And so I'm assuming that what really why they hate this man so bad is because, uh, you know, he was working with the legitimate government at that time, uh, rather than the neo-Nazi government that the U.S. CIA was planning on putting in afterwards. And of course, that did happen. Petro Poroshenko was put in. He has been, uh, some have said that he is a, uh, is a CIA a, uh, agent working for the U.S. government and the Pentagon, and he ends up coming into power while Yanukovych uh, has to flee for his life, and the Russians, President Putin, sent a special team to rescue him, to keep him from being killed uh, while this coup was there to topple his government. Instead of the U.S. really doing what it should have done, and that is trying to help Yanukovych themselves, uh, they should have been doing that like Russia was, rather than trying to quickly usher in a new neo-Nazi government that ended up uh, bringing about a butt bloodbath to all the uh, Eastern Russian-born uh, uh, Ukrainian citizens there, and of course the Russian Orthodox, again another war that is divided on religious lines. The western side of Ukraine are Roman Catholics, and the eastern side, which are more pro-Russian, are Russian Orthodox, and it became a bloody war between the two different sides there opposing. Crimea later, as we know, was, uh, uh, well, they, they did a referendum, they voted for their own independence and joined back up with Russia, which they were historically as well. Also, President Putin has done a uh, a true milestone in modern day history, uh, one that uh, many should be proud of for the president of Russia to make such a milestone here. And we thought it worth mentioning as well, because this was a, mo a memorial that uh, President Putin had uh, erected there for the victims under Stalin during the time that Stalin was the uh, president of Russia. Uh, president Putin has uh, brought, uh, brought up this memorial. Reuters has reported, many other news agencies are beginning to report this as well. The opening of the ceremony was today there. It says here, President Vladimir Putin inaugurated a monument to the victims of the Stalinist purge, purges on Monday, but Soviet-era dissidents accused him of cynicism at a time when they say authorities are riding uh, roughshod over civil freedom, freedoms. Uh, but nonetheless, it is still an incredible step forward that he is willing to admit uh, the evils that happened under the so, under the former Soviet Union, and and likely so because Stalin and uh, that of Vladimir Lenin both were Jesuits sent in to topple the Tsarist nation there in order to bring about the Western influence under the Roman Catholicism, and it was the only religion that was uh, permitted to thrive under the former communist state, the Soviet uh, Socialist Republic there, and of course the Russian Orthodox religion was being stampeded out. Uh, so because of all the victims that have died there uh, under the hand of Stalin, he raised up this monument. And of course, my wife's own uh, grandfather was also one of the victims of Stalin's uh, 
uh, reign of terror on both Jews and Christians. Uh, he was a non-practicing Jew as far as we can tell and was taken off to Siberia where he also died and her father never got to see her, his own father again. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. We do appreciate your support for the work we do here. You can, if you would like to be a part of that, you can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. We do appreciate your help tremendously, especially at, at such a time as we're dealing with right now. We'll, we'll be updating over on the Noon Institute uh, very soon here about my wife's health, uh, some of the issues we're facing there, and uh, of course, your help in making these things possible while we are here in the United States is greatly appreciated. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.